Then you want to come this way. This is the. So this is all our sites have some covered area. Um, this is the polytunnel. Um, this just allows us to extend the season a little more. So um, the, the temperature gets quite hot in there in summer, but over winter it kind of keeps it at a fairly good um, temperature. We had we we're harvesting an amazing crop of rocket there in. Um, kind of in February, March, and um, when nothing else was growing outside, so that's great. We've got in the middle there, kind of behind the um, bubble wrap, is our propagation area, and we grow everything um, for the site in seed trays here, and um, from seed. Um, and so if you, if you volunteer here, you'll get a bit of experience with sowing seeds, um, and kind of bring them on. Um, this is this mizuna bed is coming out this week. It's, um, it's we've cropped from about two or three times, given us a good crop, and um, we're just going to get the next thing in there ready to go. The next thing is also mizuna, yeah. actually, so it's just going to follow on um, naturally from that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then down the side there we've got pumpkins. Mm -hmm. So Cinderella pumpkins. Um. <laughs> We'll Do you going. heat it in the winter at all? No, it, it's all, it's all, we've got, there's a big um, bucket of water in there that kind of keep, acts as a bit of a heat sink, um, but um, no, we don't, we, we don't use any heat. Well, how, how much does it come to long season? Probably about uh, one to two months either side. Yeah. So the growing season is really kind of late March to um, end of September. Mm. Um, and then, so we'll carry on cropping from here until kind of November time, mm. yeah, and and much earlier as well, mm. so we can bring things on much earlier. Mm. Mm. As well, wow. which are um, a really good um, predator for slugs mm. um, in the garden. Um, this pond area is really essential for an organic garden. Um, you want to have some water in your garden. Um, it's good to have surface water to allow um, predators to drink. Um, so things mm. like corn flies and lace wings again. Um, predation is thirsty work. So. Um, give them um, somewhere on site so they don't have to go out looking mm -hmm. for it elsewhere and then don't come back. Um, this, this site is uh, of the garden is kind of our wild area. We don't do too much to it. We don't want to kind of disturb the wildlife that is in there. So it does look a little um, unkempt but that's the intention. Um, occasionally skim some of the duckweed off when mm -hmm. it gets a bit thick but, um, but otherwise we just let things happen there naturally and it's quite nice it's quite a busy place to work here but if there's time it's quite nice to just sit and, mm. and take it in and observe so that's the pond mm. where do the newts live the newts live well they live in the water there's mm. there's um quite a lot mm. in there it's quite you stand here for 10 minutes you? you might you might see one well, yeah, through one. the through the um oh, yeah. Yeah. do they ever come up then they do yeah they do there's a, yeah, there's a lot. They, are they actually come there. out onto the beds. Then. I haven't seen them out. They kind, they do come out. Um, kind of, I've seen them a lot in at our Kessold site, mm -hmm. um, kind of hibernating mm -hmm. more, so disturbing. Mm -hmm. you know, trying not to disturb. They, so they like kind of damp, cold. You know, yeah, you get toads as well because we really do have toads. We have a, a couple of resident toads in the polytunnel. Actually, we've got a nice mm -hmm. little bit of terracotta which they like hanging out under <laughs> so it's good yeah right on site to eat the eat the slugs can't get too many people too many things to <laughs> eat <laughs> slugs <laughs> <laughs> they're not delicious yeah. yeah are there any um, beehives nearby um, mm -hmm. not that i know of yeah. i mean there's something that we've considered is, is keeping bees as yeah. well um but we'd want to do it for kind of natural like have a natural beekeeping like yeah. beehives rather than for the honey. Yeah, yeah, for the yeah. 
And this is the behind you that you just walked by is the hardening off area. So everything that we grow from seed, we put out there and it sits there for a week, um, sometimes two, just to acclimatise and you know, get ready um, to go into the soil outside because it's a bit of a different different climate from the polytunnel to outside here. So that just um, gets some ready. Yeah. Do you get the syrup from you when you actually collect the seeds? Yeah, so we don't. We buy in quite a lot of, of seeds, um, but we do so things like sorrel. I mean, these, you know, have all gone to seed. We'd keep a couple of the plants just to collect them up, um, and then use that for next year's planting. And all the orange, and um, the red orange that you see, is all own save seed as well. I did a little trial though to see the one. There's some orange at the end. Have a look. <coughs> have a look. There's a bit darker yeah. colour and that's the, the bought seed so I was just seeing what the difference would be but our, our um, seed I think is a bit more kind of resilient for you know it's like has been growing in these conditions for a while and has kind of adapted but so it's actually more vigorous than the um, seed that we bought in so kind of what you lose in colour you gain in, in kind of health and um, bigger. So originally, um, did you buy the seeds and they were that and they were that, they were that colour? And so they've kind of and yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, and I think, I mean, those, the other ones are still a really lovely colour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just not quite so striking. Like, like, really nice. It's yeah. interesting that they changed that a lot. Yeah. What does it, I've never tried that before. What is it? Um, it's a, uh, like spinach. Oh, okay. So it's a mountain, it's, known as mountain spinach and you can see that the shape of the leaves are very similar, I mean, yeah. very similar. it's kind of goosefoot um, mm. family but they they're really nice they've got less of the oxalic acid that um, spinach mm. has oh yeah so actually it isn't that great is it how it yeah. takes all the iron out <laughs> yeah. destroy iron or something it's yeah I think, <laughs> I think it does and this is less harsh and like you get less of that yeah yeah um so here are, is the sowing area, everything that we plant we sow here um, and it goes into that um, and once we move into the, after the solstice we'll start um, thinking about the new um, crops that are going to be going in um, and um, if you come and volunteer here you can get some opportunity to get involved in that. And then finally the storage area and there's bits of storage area around the whole site. <laughs> As you might have noticed, little bits and pieces everywhere, but things pretty much all have their place. So if you um, if you're working on something and find something somewhere, just put it back there at the end when you're finished. Um, shed full of bags and stuff. Like that. <laughs> but um, this is where we keep all the tools um, that we use on the site. Um, they all get put back here. It's pretty um, clear. Have long handled tools, things like, and then shovels, spades, forks. Um, hand tools are here. Bucket, um, buckets of uh, gloves, there's um, kind of um, brushes to clean off your tools. We do an annual tool clean every year where we um, clean everything off, oil it down and um, sharpen things up as well. But on a daily basis when we're working here we just make sure all the soil um, is um, brushed off after use. Um, it's really important when using the tools just to be aware of the safety and how you're handling them how you're handling around you know, with the people around you but also how you leave them so things like rakes um, you know the classic thing is standing on a rake and, it, I mean, and that can happen so it's really important when you're not using them to stand them up against the wall um, and just be aware of other people's safety around you as well um, there's a first aid kit which is up here um, and I'm a first aider so if anything happens then just give me a shout um, what else um, there is a sign-in book here as well, so it's really important that you just sign in when you come and work and sign out um, or say what you did and then that kind of makes sure that you don't do the same things over and over and um, stuff. But it also helps us to acknowledge the amount of time that comes, comes into the site and makes it possible. Um, there's a kind of task list book at the end there as well. So when I get in in the morning, I write down everything that needs to be done during the day, and um, hopefully it gets done by the end of it. Um, but if you arrive and myself or Jimena, who's the apprentice here, 
it's busy and can't give you something to do, um, you can just check that out or if you come, you know,